Greetings, my fellow wardens. Charlie here, back with another tutorial on Prison Architect 2, this time discussing riots. When you've totally lost control of your facility and the prisoners turn to violence, how in the world do we deal with them? Well, first, let's talk briefly about what causes riots, because the best way to deal with this event is to not let it happen in the first place. Riots typically occur when enough prisoners in your facility feel that their needs are sufficiently neglected for far too long. They get angry when they aren't permitted to eat regularly, for example, lashing out for the sake of their own survival, or when the security in the prison is so strict that their basic comforts are feeling too far out of reach. If your prison is having a riot starting, there's a good chance that a persistent issue has been present in your prison for quite some time now, and there are now enough prisoners who are just sick of dealing with it. At the bottom left of your user interface, you'll see the frustration meter. It's a measurement of how hot your prison is right now. And no, I don't mean temperature like the weather. Prisoners will get frustrated when their needs are not sufficiently met. And on an individual basis, this is totally normal and often an unavoidable thing that will happen in your prison. I mean, think about how often a violent prisoner would miss meals or fun time in the yard when they're constantly being thrown in the shoe. It's unlikely that you'll ever have 100% of every prisoner's needs met. However, riots don't just happen because one or two inmates aren't getting their way. Riots tend to occur because of a higher than acceptable neglect of something in your prison, and diagnosing the cause is very important if you are to correct it before things get too hot and blow up. Click on that there frustration meter and we'll see the entire game shift to a nearly black and white color scheme, with prisoners being highlighted in a variety of color shades ranging from a dark orange to a bright green. Top left, you're going to see what this information view is trying to tell you. The less green a prisoner is highlighting, the less happy they are find out why. Click on one of those disgruntled inmates and reveal their status, and chances are they are frustrated. Inmates with this status are far more likely to be violent at any moment. Whether it be destroying things or attacking guards and inmates, violence usually follows frustration. Check their needs panel, which I walked you through in a previous video on this channel when I was breaking down prisoner needs. It's very likely one or more of these needs are not met well. And remember, not all needs are as important to fulfill consistently. So the ones that are more essential are likely to piss them off more when they're not met. If you see a high number of frustrated inmates in your prison and they all have similar needs not being met, this should be a clear indication that you are failing them as a ward. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I got a little carried away there. Uh, uh, it should be a clear indication of how their expectations uh, within this facility are not presently being met in a satisfactory way on a macro scale. So anyway, fix it. If they are all hungry, sort out your food schedule, perhaps providing them with more time to eat, more seating. Perhaps you actually can't have too many cooks in the kitchen after all. If their freedom need is terrible, then give them more yard time or add an hour or two to their freedom slot in the regime. Watch the needs focused video I made earlier here on this channel to learn more about how to meet specific types of needs. But let's say it's too late. It's happening. Red alert all around. Cook's work staff are all back hiding in the corner. A riot has begun. What can we do? Okay, first, don't panic. Remember, you have control of time, so pause. You can do that and really assess the situation. How many prisoners are rioting? Four, eight, 15? Another important question is where are they rioting? Is it like in a single room or a building or multiple? If, for example, the riot is contained within a single cell block, a more measured response will likely work over a prison-wide lockdown, for example. After all, remember, you have some people in this prison that are quite upset with you right now, but they're not rioting. But for sure though, if this riot is in multiple locations, a prison-wide bang up is an essential first step in containing the issue. You want every prisoner not participating in the riot safe, but also not close enough to the action to be encouraged to start fighting too. Because that'll happen. They see it, they think they can join in on the fun. It's not gonna be so much fun for you. Look on the bottom right and click that security measures button to bring up this action wheel. Now, pretty much every action on this wheel is gonna have some kind of negative effect on the mood of your inmates, but these tools can also save your job. The button with the cell door and an arrow is the bang up button. Press that to tell every inmate in the prison that's still willing to cooperate with you anyway, that they need to go back to their cells immediately and stay there. That will at least make it more clear to us which inmates are rioting and which are not, and will generally keep them away from the action. 
Now, if any of them do decide to kick off once they're in their cells, at least they are already contained in a tiny room, and destroying property is better than destroying each other. We'll deal with them later. We have higher priorities right now. Now, you may be tempted to perform a lockdown, but remember, this locks every door in the prison, meaning that your staff that are already trapped in the room with the violence will now be staying trapped in the room with the violence. This may also make it more difficult to reinforce the contested area, so use this at your own discretion. Next, it's time to call in the muscle. Your standard guards may be able to delay the violent demonstration, but if there are a large number of inmates acting out, your staff will likely get overwhelmed very quickly, as it is rare for guard staff to not already be very outnumbered by inmates in a prison. Don't give inmates a chance to do that. Dial 1-800-RIOT-SQUAD. In that same security measures tool set, there's a telephone for calling emergency response teams. There are two types, paramedics and riot squads. There are also two teams for each type. If there's a lot of violence, we will likely need both, but call the riot squad ahead of the paramedics so that they can help contain the situation as fast as possible. Each team you call will cost you a bit of cash, but these units are more effective at their jobs than the standard guards and doctors that you have on your payroll. For the riot squad, you send them to contain the violence. You can do this in two ways. You can use the interface at the top above the riot status UI to left click the squad that you want to move and then right click in the prison where you want them to go. They will report to that location immediately, but will not stop to handle any situations on their way there. So depending on the situation, you may find it helpful to move them a bit more gradually through a complex to clear areas as you travel. The second way, and this is most likely the way you'll be using, especially once things get chaotic, is to just right click on a location anywhere that you're looking at and use this wheel that pops up. You can click multiple times on these different units to send that type of unit to this location. For paramedics, you should send them to locations where fighting occurred, but maybe has started to thin out. And of course, anywhere where there's a large number of wounded inmates and staff. It is very important that medical attention arrive to help them before they die. So focus any prisoner with very low health meters and bleeding or critical status, as they are likely the ones that have the shortest timers on their lives. Why is it important to heal people fast? Well, because too many people dying on your watch, you lose the game assuming you have failure conditions turned on. The riot UI at the top of the screen will tell you how many inmates are currently rioting. This number changes as inmates join the fray or get knocked out of the fight. There is also a timer on the right showing you how long the riot has been going on, and then a progress bar where the state authorities will step in and take your prison from you if you let it fill up. Basically, you're losing condition. The worse the situation is, the faster that bar will fill until you have things under control again. The goal for the inmates is to control enough territory for long enough that your bar fills up and you lose. Your goal, of course, is to stop that from happening. If you're having trouble identifying where the riot is at, make like a bull and see the red areas around your prison. These are the areas that are under rioter control and are also the things that are causing your progress bar up there to go up. So you, you wanna take control of those as fast as you can. Inmates can take these territories even if there's just one prisoner in there rioting, as long as there's no guards there to contest it. And once rioters take control of a territory, they will maintain control of that territory until your guards come in to take it from them. Meaning, they can take it, leave, have the room completely empty, but still control it if you don't tag up with at least one guard and take it back. There are also these orangish colored zones. Uh, these are places where inmates are attempting to control, but do not yet have it either because not enough time has passed there yet, or because your guards are currently in there contesting it by being present in a high enough force. Rooms without any color shading at all aren't necessarily safe, they just aren't being threatened with a takeover at this time and are not contributing to your lose condition right now. Even with these tips though, it's not guaranteed that you'll be able to handle a particularly nasty situation without going over the death threshold for failure. Sometimes you just screw up too much to bring it back on track. And that's what lawyers are for. If your prison doesn't have a lawyer of its own, consider getting one before it all hits the fan. And if you did have the foresight of legal protection, you're in luck because lawyers know how to get you off the hook, assuming you have the money to pay for it. In the administration menu, visit the legal tab and the second column here discusses the mortality clause of your contract, stating that your prison will be shut down if there are ever 20 deaths in a single day. However, for some money, in the heat of the moment, your lawyer could be paid with this button right here and it all just magically goes away, at least for now. And if you don't have the cash, hey, don't sweat it. Remember, this is a video game. You can reload a previous save. 
You don't even have Doc Brown yelling at you. There's a button right there. So feel free to go back, mess with the past, and change the future. Riots are a complex event that are unique to deal with in each instance. But hopefully, with the help of this video and previous videos on this channel, you'll be well on your way to being a better crisis manager. Or, better yet, just a better warden in the first place. <laughs> so that these situations are rare to begin with. My name is Charlie. It's been a riot making this video for you. And hopefully, I'll see you in another video soon. Bye-bye.